Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So on my continuing Caden Live tutorial series, today I'm going to be going over how to create your very first project. Now, all of these tutorials, they're primarily intended for people who are brand new to Caden Live or just brand new to video editing in general. And so if you are somebody who's used to video editing, these things are going to be very, very basic. And so the very first thing that you want to do is whenever you create your new project file, you want to choose the project settings. And what I mean by that is the resolution and frames per second. And so you can see here, you can see a variety of resolution options. But the two frames per second that I normally just work with and a lot of people work with is either 24 frames per second or 60 frames per second. And if you're not familiar with the difference between the two, the main difference is how you want it to look. Uh, that's a general description. So if you did something in 24 frames per second, it'll have a more cinema like quality because that's pretty much how all movies are shot they're shot in 24 frames so that's one thing that you'll notice and then if you compare to 60 frames per second this one has more of that tv broadcast quality look and if you want to have that look or if you want to record something at a very high motion then 60 frames per second would work well there so that's the general difference between the two and I myself, I normally shoot everything in 24 frames per second. That's the way that I like to actually have my videos. But once you've chosen the type of project that you want, the very next thing you definitely want to do is save your project. Okay, so I would definitely recommend that you save your project before you do anything else. So that way that you don't lose it, you know, so I've already saved it right here. And now you could actually insert your clips. There are a number of ways that you can insert your clips. Normally, I just do add clip and you choose where you want to add the clip from or if you already have the folder open just simply drag the clip over here it could either be a video clip or audio clip but right here we're just going to work with the video clips okay so right there and so I'm going to go ahead and save this over my existing one and even though there is a auto save auto recovery feature it doesn't always work hundred percent so that's why I recommend that you save often now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to give you a tour of the main parts of Caden Live because there are a lot of options here. And for me, I don't use all the options. And if you ever wanted to learn every single detail about Caden Live, uh, the actual Caden Live handbook is excellent. When you open this, it will open up a browser and it will start with a quick start. But I recommend you go to the complete manual. And this has so many things right here and they also have accompanying videos as well. So if you really want to get into Caden Live and learn pretty much everything that it has to offer, this is the best place to go. Okay, so that's there for you at any point. So what that means is whenever I'm showing you my tutorial, I'm primarily going to be covering things that I use. So there's options that I might not use or maybe I'm not even familiar with. Okay, so I just want to put that out there. So now that you actually have your project set up, you have it saved, you have your clips here, now you can actually drag it to your project timeline. And by default, the project timeline, there's three video tracks and two audio tracks, and you could add more as needed. You could right click, you could insert tracks, delete tracks, okay? So let's go ahead and pull this one down here. So this is my main track right there, and I have a secondary one as well. Now, the main things that I use here are first, this is the selection tool, which is self-explanatory. You can move things around. Uh, the next one is the razor tool, which will allow you to actually splice your video. So you could splice it up in different parts and go back to the selection tool. And then you could move things around with the selection tool. And then the final one here is the spacer tool. So what this will allow you to do is say, hey, I want to move this last part of the clip. It'll move that. But if you actually move it back to a previous clip, it groups it automatically. And then if you go back to the very first clip, see, it groups everything together. But as you move, it moves the latest one. So you see that right there. So that can come in handy if you need it. But typically for me, I just use the selection and the razor tool. That's pretty much all I use up here that gets the job done. Now there are some other options here. There is something called the insertion right here. So say for example, you want to insert a clip in between here. So what it would do is it would put the clip exactly in between this point and it would cut up your video right here. So say I want to add this stream clip. So all you would do is just click on here. 
And typically what it would normally do is it would insert it right here. Um, it is kind of odd. Sometimes it does that, but sometimes it doesn't, but that's how it should work. And what it did is it automatically split right in the middle of where your clips are. Now there is another option. This is to overwrite. So this is different. If you do overwrite, it'll overwrite anything in this particular portion. So you will lose whatever information is there. Whereas in here, it puts it in between whatever was there before. So if I did the same thing here, it would actually remove whatever was in that part of the timeline. So you want to be careful in doing that. So that's why for me, I normally just use the simple selection and razor, but it is up to you and how you want to do your projects. And these other ones right here, extract timeline zone and also lift timeline zone, they haven't worked really well for me. Uh, I have tried different things, but what it would normally do is it would remove stuff inside your timeline, but it doesn't always work. And it's a feature that I rarely ever use. And so I don't really mess with that. So these are the main things that I use right here. Just this, this, and sometimes the spacer tool. And in terms of the insertion and overwrite, I rarely ever use it. And this one, I honestly I don't use at all. And then if you actually go down here, there are other options here as well. Now you could split audio and video automatically. And so you can see there, there is the video and audio. And so that's already split for you. So you could kind of see that. And another thing is automatic transitions. And so this one, I don't really see the difference. So let me show you here. And I'm going to have to zoom in a little. So this is a transition. This is a dissolve transition. And right now I have it set as the automatic transition off. And so what it normally does is it will automatically do a transition for you. You see from one to another. So for example, if you didn't have the transition, it would just not show the clip until it gets there. See, it abruptly shows your next video. Now, typically the default is automatic transitions will be on. And so if you click on here, see, but here I don't see the difference between the automatic and non-automatic, except the colors are different. And so I don't really see a difference there, but the actual default is automatic. I would leave it the way that it is. And now you could also do this. You could show video thumbnails. See your timeline, it shows a video thumbnail. So if you click on it, it would turn it off. It will only show your audio track, but I like having it there. Similarly, if you did video, I mean the audio, see the audio is gone there and now it'll only show your video, but I like to have it, uh, both of them there by default. And then another thing you can do is add markers or comments. So for example, say you wanted to add a marker right here and I'm going to explain to you what that means. So if you right click and you add a guide, so it'll put a marker right there at one minute, 34 seconds. And right here, it, uh, let's add another marker, right? So now what you could do is you could right click on your mouse and then you could actually go to different parts of it. See right there. So that'll come in really handy, especially if you have really large projects where you need to move. But what you can also do is you can actually name the markers, which comes in really handy. So it's kind of tricky. You have to make sure your mouse is over and it turns red right there. As you can see there, you double click on it. Now you can name it. Okay. So I just named this mark two. And let's go ahead and go here. We'll name this one uh, Mark 1. Mark 1. So this is why it's important. So if you right click on the actual marker, this little cursor up here, then you go to, see, you can go to Mark 2, Mark 1. And then if you have right here where it says show markers comments, you could turn it off. I like to have it on so then I know where things are at, especially if you have a very, you know, complex project with a lot of clips. Next thing is this snap tool. So what snapping means is if you have it on, what it would do is between clips, like here, if you were to like cut one up, if you have snap on, it's kind of like a magnet. It'll pull it in and it is, it is snap it, you know? Whereas if you don't have it on, it won't do that snapping thing. And it's, it's really something you have to play around with. I like to have snap on, but there may be instances where you want to have that off. Now the next one is to actually see your entire project. Now, right now here, you could zoom in and out. See, so say for example, you zoomed in a lot and wow, I need to go back out and see my whole project. All you have to do is click on this and now you can see your entire project. And if you are zoomed in, you can also decrease it here as well. Zoom out. So, but I just use that. So that makes it really easy for me. 
And so those are all the main things that I do for a very simple project. And I'm gonna get into more of the details later, but this is how you create your very first project. And whenever you are ready to export and render the file, all you have to do is go up here to render, and then you choose the actual format that you want. There's many options here. Typically for me, I just choose MP4, and then I render. Now there are more options here, okay? And for me, if you're just starting out, don't worry about this. This is more advanced stuff. And honestly, I don't really mess with them because the performance normally, your actual Caden Live editor will choose the right one for your machine. You could play around with it if you want, but normally I don't do that. I just go ahead and choose the format that I want and I render the file and that is it. That is how you actually create your very first project and all the things that I shown you here, these are things that I normally use. And as I stated a little bit earlier, if you really want to go into the details of each one of these features, the actual help menu works really well. Uh, once you actually get used to just using this, it'll become second nature. And when you learn how to play around with this, you'll be able to use other video editors as well. And so that is it for this particular episode. And don't forget, I do have an entire tutorial series for Caden Live if you want to see that, or if you want to see my other video tutorial series for OpenShot, I will have all of that in the description area below. So if you had any thoughts on this, I'd like to know, leave that in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me, and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group, where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.